Sport Sunday. I'm Max Kleiman. Was over on the other set last segment, hosting this segment about the Celtics Heat series coming up this week and next week. Of course, the Celtics are matched up against the restocked Miami Heat in round two of the NBA playoffs. Game one tipped off this afternoon in Miami, and some people are even doubting if we should be calling this a rivalry. At least one YBA reporter has some thoughts on the subject. Let's check in with Jason Siegel. Sports. It's the biggest rivalry in the NBA this season, Celtics Heat. Out of the four games played in the regular season, the Celtics were victorious three times. I think that the key players in the series are LeBron James, the Heat, and Ray Allen for Boston. LeBron James has yet to win a playoff series against Celtics in his career. Ray Allen is able to get off big shots at the end of big games, while LeBron James has trouble making last second shots to win playoff games. The Celtics have the advantage on defense. Miami doesn't have many big players, especially compared to Boston, who have four big players, Jermaine O'Neal, Glenn Davis, Nenon Kristic, and Kevin Garnett. The Celtics also have better players at center. Chris Boss isn't a true center, and the Celtics can use their size advantage to win the opening tip. The Heat do have home court advantage, but I think that the Celtics will win the series in six games. The Celtics always have a player to step up during key moments, for example, against the Knicks. Ray Allen hitting a three-pointer with 11 seconds left in Game 1. Although the Celtics are older and Paul Pierce may not be able to keep up with LeBron James, Jeff Green can help out on defense and get a few steals or blocks. That's how I see the Celtics and Heat series playing out. I'm Jason Siegel for YBA Sports. Thanks, Jason. Of course, game one of the much-anticipated series is underway. Let's check the scoreboard for a quick update. Here we see that in the fourth quarter, the Miami Heat has the 87-74 to lead over the Boston Celtics. Not looking good for the Celtics right now, down 13. Just an ugly game so far. The Celtics were down 19, cut it to 9, and haven't really been able to get much closer than that since the first half and once again, down by double digits. So let's talk about the Celtics in this series against the Heat. They, some, they won three games the regular season, but lost the fourth. Does the regular season games have any implication in these playoff games? You know, in my opinion, not that much, but I will say, however, it looks as though the last time they played each other in Miami, the, the Heat crushed them, and I think that there was a reason for that. Earlier in the season when the Celtics played the Heat, they were not really together as a team yet. They still had to, they really took the whole season to get themselves together, and in my opinion, I think now they are together, they're playing very well. Um, they should have swept Philly in the first round, um, and to be honest with you, I just look at the Celtics team, I, I don't see how they're going to match up well. You know, since the Perkins trade, I liked Jeff Green, but he hasn't been producing that well. And I had mentioned that the only way that trade would ever work for them, really, is if he could guard LeBron James effectively and at least slow him down to a degree, kind of like what Paul Pierce can do. Because you combine that, if you combine that kind of a duo against LeBron, that could be a big factor. But he hasn't done that so far, at least from what we've seen in Game 1. Uh, I think if they had Perkins, it would, right now, maybe the score would be flipped, in my opinion. What do you guys think? Uh, Josh, I, I agree with you completely about the whole um, how we absolutely we need Perkins and we, I feel like we should have traded him because if you watch the game, you see that um, the way I see it, I think it's Dwayne Wade and LeBron James versus yeah. the Celtics. And we aren't even putting forth our full effort. You see us jogging down the court and they're sprinting and they're, they're getting the points, they're putting up the board and so what, some of their shots, they fall in and some of ours don't, but they take more and they're going in more. So. Overall, I mean, we need to step it up, and uh, hopefully this is a huge wake-up call for the rest of the series. Well, hopefully. What do you think, Jason? Uh, well, going back to Max's question, the regular season games <clears throat> definitely don't matter. When you're a playoff team, but they're not your uh, uh, one-seed or an eight-seed, you just have to forget everything that happened in the regular season and just start over. Celtics, uh, obviously sweeping the Knicks, had a week off, and <clears throat> there's no excuse for their poor playing this afternoon. Like you said um, there, uh, like the Heat sprinting down the court, the Celtics are jogging. They're not doing what they're not getting in uh, down low, and they're for they're putting themselves into traffic, and it's just not working. Yeah, you have the uh, you have the Heat actually playing 
some stonewall defense now. You have nothing in the paint is going in. They're blocking every shot. They're getting penalties called like on them. They're, they're doing exactly what they need to be doing, and the Celtics cannot find a way around this because not only can they not get it in the paint, but they try to go out and take threes, and they're getting stuffed. They're missing the shot, and they're, just, and they're not getting rebounds either. That's a huge factor is the Heat are showing up and getting every rebound offensively and defensively on both sides of the court. Right. They're getting the ball back, and they're taking more shots, whereas the Celtics are not doing that. Well, you guys were talking about the Perkins trade, and I think the key to the Perkins trade for Danny Ainge and the rest of the Celtics was Shaquille O'Neal's health. And people thought that if he was healthy, then sure, the Perkins trade is a good idea. You improve your bench, you still have some big men, but Shaquille O'Neal hasn't been healthy, and they haven't had a strong big man in the middle because Jermaine O'Neal just doesn't compare to Shaquille O'Neal. Do you guys think that the Celtics have a chance of winning this series if the big man can't play? Well, I actually, I don't think so, but I will say this, however. I don't think it was necessarily just Shaq. I think they were mostly just saying one of the O'Neals had to be healthy. Because when you look at it, they did get in a non Christic. Uh, if that's how you say his name, uh, they got him in the trade, and believe it or not, he, he has looked bad at times, but some other times he's actually looked decent. He can get the ball, he can he has long arms, he can get those rebounds. He's a good player off the bench. To be honest with you, I think that probably what they just need is to have Jermaine O'Neal or Shaq healthy. I do think that Shaq needs to come back for Game 2. Assuming the Heat hold on to this game, I think Game 2, I know this is going to sound kind of weird, but I think they sh- Game 2 could be a must-win for them because I don't think they want to go to TD Garden down 0-2 against the Heat because the Heat will probably pick at least one of those games because uh, I see it as a back-and-forth kind of series. So I do think, and I am kind of, I feel kind of annoyed about the Shaq situation because if you go back to the New York series, they were talking about, oh, you know, there's a possibility he could play game one, which sounds like he would be really close, and if he wouldn't play game one, then he should be back for two. Well, he didn't play for game two either, then game three or game four, and then game one today, which really astonishes me. Like, it's making me wonder, like, why do they keep mentioning how he's this close to coming back, but he hasn't come back yet after five games? I'm quite annoyed by this, and it makes me wonder if they're sort of teasing us along with this. Maybe Shaq really isn't quite ready yet. What do you think, Jason? Well, I definitely agree with you. I think the Celtics, I don't think they have a chance to win the series, unfortunately, but it's not the sh- uh, Shaq factor. It's mm-hmm. because Glenn Davis, he's been flipping the switch on and off throughout the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't the non Christic hasn't been doing that well. Shaq's injured, and Jermaine O'Neal, he can't do it all himself. And, right. you know, Garnett, he's been sort of struggling, uh, kind of like Glenn Davis flipping the switch on and off. And Jermaine O'Neal, he can't do it all alone. And then... You have Rondo, he's been doing very well, but mm-hmm. as as have Alan Pierce, but they're not guys who get down low. They're the ones who, you know, take the three-pointers, and they haven't necessarily been making them here in this game one, so I don't think that they have a chance to win the series. All right. All right uh, I disagree with you guys, and uh, back to Max's question. Um, if you look at it this way, if you take away Dwayne Wade and LeBron James from the Heat, they have nothing, and their entire team, mm-hmm. I personally think, would fall down. Now you take the Celtics, you take away nothing. You, you take away what, Shaq. They still have a ton of players they can actually go up onto. So the way I see it is the Celtics have like a, more of a spread kind of uh, skill level, whereas the Heat have maybe two, three players that are throwing down all their points, getting all their rebounds, and just like you see LeBron James, you watch his game. He's getting the rebounds, and he's getting done what needs to be done. Now if you take away him or Dwayne Wade, that's going to completely mess up their series. Now if you take away Shaq, who is a big man on the court and uh, is a big power, but very not big man. Yeah, extreme, very big man. But you still have Jermaine O'Neal, you still have you know Rondo, Pierce, you still have big players that can still put forth effort. And I, I personally think that uh, without Shaq, it might be a bit tougher. But I still think we can win the series. No, you know, see, I, I understand your points, I do. But you know, I, I I agree that if you take away Wade or James, it, def- it significantly hurts the Heat. But I disagree that they're the ones getting all the points. You, we were watching the games. We, you saw James Jones get into the action. He has, like, what? He was, like, 5 of 5 from downtown. Yeah, but is this he, every game you see James Jones get into the action, or is that just one game or maybe well, two yeah, games? Well, yeah, I know. He's not, right not going to consistently get you 20 points a game. But, but he's you a need guy someone who, like that. That's who LeBron James and, and Dwayne a, Wade are. They are there. If you If you watch their entire, like, your entire season, you have those two players consistently coming up and getting points. If you take those away, we don't have a player like that we might have Pierce, who gets a lot of points, but we don't have someone who's consistently getting all of the points. Well, this will be a really interesting series. We obviously have a little argument going on mm-hmm. over there, but it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out between the Celtics and the Heat. We'll check the ice when K-Sports Sunday returns. The Bruins survived the Canadians and opened up big against the Flyers. We'll discuss that and more after a short timeout. Hi, 
I'm Julia from YBA. For the past few years, I've been coming to the YBA training studios once a week or so. I'm so excited that now I'll be able to practice my broadcast skills with YBA Online. The new course has so much more than what we have learned at the studio. You can practice your delivery by recording a video with a simple